now and then I have a subscriber send me a mystery box and sometimes they want me to make content out of the box which is always the biggest challenge because you never know what to expect in these boxes. It's completely different than doing something between you and another content creator. Usually there's a theme with those or you have so many projects you have to make. With these, it's completely random and you're kind of going on the fly to see what you can smoosh together and in the time that you can make it because this isn't necessarily planned out content, which makes it even more of a challenge. And a huge reason I love to get these because I'm able to just make you all some nice entertainment and creative DIYs that I wasn't even anticipating on making for you. This box had the most amount of napkins I had ever been given for any type of challenge and they're all stunning. I'll be hoarding them all. I will not be sharing these napkins. Just letting you know ahead of time. And hands down, this was my favorite napkin. As for all of these little pieces that were in this box, I am so grateful to receive these and will not be able to DIY all of them in this video. So I am sure you will see them throughout the year at different times. And I will try and make sure to remember and thank Connie for this amazing box. I appreciate you so much for the opportunity to take time out from my regularly scheduled program and do this mystery box challenge. I think this beautiful three piece set is going to look stunning decoupaged. We're going to use a blue napkin for this to match our one piece and use deco art decoupage in the mats and apply a nice healthy thick layer over all the wood on the three pieces of these. We're going to use the iron one method. I know it's going to be a little scary because all these have grooves and little shapes in them that we're going to have to make sure we're ironing onto. So I'm putting a nice healthy thick layer all over and we're going to let this dry. This napkin reminds me of the blue willow china pattern. It's simply stunning and we're going to need to start off by chopping off this end right here on three different napkins because it was only on the one side. Luckily I had three napkins, okay? Because we're gonna need three. If you have never decoupaged before, make sure to pull off all the sneaky layers from the top decorative layer. You're only ever gonna use that top decorative layer. And if you've never used the iron one method, I'm a bad example here, okay? <laughs> you wanna use some parchment paper between your napkin and the iron. I'm winging it here and I am literally just taking my little Cricut iron and pressing it on top of the napkin. It can get tricky doing this because it's possible your iron could just stick to the Mod Podge. So don't do as I do, do as I'm telling you, okay? Trust me, trust me, get your parchment paper. And doesn't matter what kind of iron people, use whatever iron works for you. I just happen to usually have this sucker sitting right next to me, so I heat it on up. I get asked very often if it has to be this iron or can they use any other iron? You can use whatever iron works best for you. Walmart actually has a really inexpensive tiny iron. I'll pop it right here for you. Take a screenshot and see if your local store has it or if you can get it online. That will probably do just as good a job as this one does. I have a tiny iron from Walmart, but it is a little bit more expensive and it has steam. I just don't put any water in it, so I don't have to worry about that. As you can see, I took those strips and put them on the very front of each one of our little pieces here. And around the edges, I'm just gently taking the iron and curving where the napkin is over to the side as far as I can. And since we already have that dry Mod Podge on there, the heat from the iron is activating it through the napkin and it's catching really, really well. Just be careful if you go to do this so you don't burn yourself. When I got to the very end, I gently pulled the napkin over and pressed to make sure that it stayed in place on the edges. These beautiful napkins had a whole nother design on them that I obviously wanted to make use of. So I flipped over each one of our little wooden pieces and left a little overhang of the napkin as I started to iron it. This way, as you can see here, there is a little section where the back meets the front. 
And I'm just taking the iron and pressing it all the way up to that where the Mod Podge meets. Be careful not to go too far over. This way you don't start ironing over the front of your piece. When you're happy with it, just go ahead and pull any extra napkin off. I applied the same technique to all three pieces and then tore a section to be able to place it in the center of the spoon and in the center of the fork spot thingy, whatever, <laughs> whatever this flat one is. You can skip this next part and just seal over it. I decided to take a little sander and get some extra little sections off. I really was inspired by some of these beautiful clay pieces that I found online. And I thought that this napkin, because it looked like that beautiful blue willow pattern, would really help bring this to life. If you want, you could always paint the wood white. It would bring more of that blue willow look out. But I really was going for more of that clay look. And I really feel like these turned out so pretty. For this project, we're going to take this textured paper, even though I'm not really sure what it is, but we're going to call it textured paper for this project. And I don't like the color. So we're going to take Dixie Bell's silver gelding wax and put a nice layer over a decent section of this textured paper. Plus it's gonna match the overall aesthetic of the end result. Just, just roll with me, okay? I know you're not sure yet. I promise it's going somewhere good. I put that thing to the side to dry and grab these little chalkboard tags I had from Dollar Tree. Didn't like the little twine. It's not gonna match our aesthetic. So I removed that and got to cutting this down. I made sure to cut it just small enough that we could see some of the dark spots around the outside of the tag. When I was happy with that, I grabbed some hot glue and just put a little bit around each piece and attached our texture pieces. Then I grabbed two little stickers and put one on the center of each one of our tags. Instead of beads, because I feel like they get played out a lot, I grabbed some of these cute little pearls to add to the tags and I think these turned out pretty good for a girl who was horrible at paper crafts. I love to DIY little wood boxes. I have such a little place in my heart for projects like these. And the possibilities are pretty endless. But today, this napkin really inspired me to want to create an Indonesian style keepsake box. I see these all the time whenever I'm out in little thrift stores. And I'm always taken away by the authenticity and the uniqueness of the piece. And I thought we could totally recreate this. We're going to start off by grabbing us a textured rubber mat. You could use regular clay molds if you want. I just have this on hand and think it would be perfect. And I'm using my favorite creative paper clay. Use whatever kind of clay you want. This is my favorite clay. I have used several different kinds. I struggle with hand grip strength and I share this every single time I use this clay because I usually get pushback in the comments. Have you tried this? Have you tried this? Have you tried this? Why do you use this? All the things. And it's just my favorite, people. It's my favorite. I've used several different types. I like putting this on furniture. It glues well. It lasts well even after I've sealed it. It sands down fine. You use what works for you. I like this stuff. I don't know what else to say. And yes, I actually have fancy schmancy clay tools, but I just grabbed a paintbrush off to the side here and use that to roll this stuff out. Add some cornstarch to your mat to prevent sticking. I decided to live on the wild side here and didn't put any on. And as you can see, mine is sticking just a little bit, but I wasn't too worried about that. I took a minute here sizing up where I wanted this on the top of the box. And then I grabbed a little clay tool and trimmed all the excess clay off of our piece. Wow. 
when I was happy with that, I took my spray bottle and sprayed around the edges so I could smooth out all the little bits that were popping around the design after trimming the clay down. I keep forgetting to grab wood glue and I decided instead I'm just going to use my tacky glue because I've done this before and I know that the tacky glue is going to make sure that this clay sticks on top of our box. Put a nice healthy amount on here and then smooshed it all around so it covered the back of the clay. Pressed it down onto the top of the box and then I grabbed my teeny tiny screwdriver and removed the hardware on the front of the box. I've recently been getting asked where I got this from. It was the Amazon purchase. And I don't see the exact one anymore, but this one's really similar. Next up, we're going to take this deco art decoupage in the mat and create a thick layer around the outside of our box. Not the whole thing, just kind of like the top down. Okay, just the top down. And we're going to let this dry. I'm starting off painting the little clay piece with this aqua color. And it's really important that you make sure your clay piece is dry for something like this because you really got to smush it in all the little sections. Now, as I'm painting this, I realize, hmm, this color is off slightly from the napkin. You'll see in a little bit, we do make adjustments. Once I had this painted, I grabbed some antique Waverly wax and a teeny tiny paintbrush so I could get in all the little creases right around our design here. And I smush it in nice and dark so it fades from our piece to the outside of the box. When I was happy with that, I grabbed a baby wipe and just smooshed the rest of that antique Waverly Wax around the entire top section of the box. I'm tearing off a little corner here so it reveals all the little sneaky layers. So we can just use the top decorative piece of this napkin to iron onto our box. I do take a pair of scissors and usually I don't really care too much about this, but on this particular project, I didn't want any of those bumpy ends to show. I cut them all off. Now, truth be told, make sure you're using parchment paper between your iron and your napkin just to be on the safe side. I did not. Okay, I did not. I came back in here and mixed in some Christmas tree green with the aqua color and got more spot on of a match with our napkin. I sanded off all the extra napkin once the piece was dry and then grabbed some more of that antique Waverly wax, went around the edges, put on some of this Dixie Bell gold gilding wax to match our little fixtures, attach them back up and look how beautiful this turned out. As always, people, thank you all so much for hanging out with me today. Connie, thank you so much for the opportunity to create all these pieces in the mystery box. I hope everyone enjoyed the DIYs and until next time.